You now know how a file system is constructed and how a file system is mounted onto a Linux file system. What we're going to look at in this lesson is the mechanism used by the operating system to mount all the different parts of a file system. This way, when Linux boots, all the file systems become mounted. The file systems to be mounted are kept in a table in the etc directory. The table is named FSTAB, which is sort of an acronym for File Systems Table. And like most configuration files in Linux, it's in plain ASCII text. Each line in this file contains the information passed to the mount command. The first item on each line is the device node. That's followed by the name of the directory onto which the disk is to be mounted. Notice the top entry in the file. It specifies that the HDA5 device be mounted as the slash directory. That is the root directory file system, and all other file systems are mounted somewhere under it. The third entry on each line is the file system type. You already know about the standard Linux file system type EXT2. ISO 9660 is the standard file system used by CD-ROMs. It's because the CD-ROM file system is standard and public that the same CD can be addressed by several different operating systems. Following the file system type are other settings that have to do with the mounting of the file system, such as RO for read-only and RW for read-write permissions. Notice that I have my CD-ROM and floppy drive specified as no auto. That prevents them from being automatically mounted whenever I insert a disk. I added these settings myself. I found it inconvenient to have windows popping up and things going on just because I stuck a CD in the slot. But that's a matter of personal preference. Also note that the device node for the CD-ROM is named CD-ROM. This is for convenience because there are different kinds of CD-ROMs and some of them require different kinds of device nodes. Because you'll probably be mounting and unmounting the CD-ROM a lot, it's convenient to create a device node with a name that you can remember. If it has the same major and minor numbers as the original node that works with a CD-ROM, it will work in exactly the same way. The name doesn't matter. The swap partition is something I talked about earlier. It's necessary for the operating system, and you'll find that once you've declared a swap partition during the Linux installation process, you won't have to deal with it after that. The FS table is automatically constructed with the swap partition entries already in it, and you almost never have to change them. The PROC file system is very special. It's not really a file system, it's a pseudo file system that allows you direct access to the running kernel. We'll be peeking into the kernel later.